Hello and welcome to part four of this series on creating games using Construct 2. In part three, we talked about giving behaviors to our, our player and the platform that we created in our game. In part four, we're going to do a little intro into the event sheet to give our platforms um, some, some movement and make it add a little complexity to our game. So let's go back to our, our project and I'm going to add two more uh, behaviors that we didn't talk about before one to the platform and one to the behavior so the platform I'm going to add or sorry let's start with the player with the player I'm gonna add the wrap behavior and get done with that so if you've ever played doodle jump uh, is a good example of using wrap or snake you can go out one side and come in the other so let me run that just so you can take a look at what that looks like so I can jump from one side to the other and actually go from top to bottom as well so that's what that's what wrap is and then also I'm going to have um, have our platform object I'm gonna give it the bullet behavior and the bullet behavior is fairly simple what it does is it gives um, it gives things a constant uh, constant velocity in a certain or constant speed in a certain direction so it gives it velocity and so I'll go ahead and add behaviors and I'll add bullet and X out of that and in the bullet properties over here on the left there's a property called set angle and what that set angle does is it set the it sets the the rotational angle I guess of the platform object to the direction of its movement so we don't want it to do that we want to set that to no and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have these platform objects moving downward and then when they get to the bottom of the screen we kinda of wanna respawn them up to the top so that we have kind of an infinite jumper kind of game and all of that logic is gonna take place in the event sheet so let's go ahead and switch over to the event sheet and let me kind of break down how the event sheet works so there's uh, two main concepts that we're gonna worry about here the first is an event so this grayed out button right here says add event an event is is a trigger it's when something happens right so when the game starts or when I land on a platform or when I get a certain score something like that and then you'll have corresponding actions that tell what to do when that event is triggered so let's say when the layout is started let's give our platforms a direction going downward and then we'll have another event in action where uh, when they get to the bottom of the screen let's respawn them back up to the top so let's start with that first uh, the first event so when the when the layout starts so when the game starts so let's add event and you'll have events and actions for each of the different objects that you've added to your game so right now we have the platform and the player but generic events to the game are going to be in system so I'll go under system and I can either scroll down or I can start typing I'll start typing and I'm gonna type on start of layout so when the game starts basically and I'll double click that and now it adds it over here and to the right you can now add an action for that corresponding event so again our action is going to be to set the angle of motion for our platform objects downward so let, so now since we're doing something specific to the platform let's select it and if I scroll down a little bit I see that there are a section of actions corresponding to the bullet behavior there's also a section for the jump through behavior and then a section for the sign behavior so pretty much anytime you add a behavior you'll get those extra properties and then you'll get extra events and actions so the one that I'm looking for here is the set angle of motion so let me double click that one and then zero degrees is going to be to the right 90 is down 180 to the left and 270 is going to be up so I'm going to set this to 90 to have it move down and now my next event is when when one of those platforms gets to the bottom of the screen I want to respawn it up to the top right so to check to see if it gets to the bottom of the screen we want to check if his y coordinate 
is going to be greater than the layout height. So in gaming, your the way your coordinate system works is the top left, up in this top left corner over here. Oh, sorry about that. Is the is the origin. So as um, as x gets bigger, you start moving to the right. As y gets bigger, you start moving downward. This is a little bit different than you're used to in your typical math class where the origin is kind of the bottom left over here of the graph. But here it's top top left and positive y is going down. So then when this y coordinate of any of these platforms gets greater than this line, which is a built-in variable called layout height, then we want to respawn it up, up to the top. So let's go back over to our event sheet. Let's add event, and this is going to be a um, event specific to the platform object, so I'll select it. And then I want to compare Y. So each object, each instance of an object has an X and Y coordinate. So here we're going to compare its Y coordinate. And we can choose to see if it's less than, equal to, greater than, and I'll choose greater than, equal to. And if this Y coordinate is greater than or equal to the layout height, and I can start typing and IntelliSense kind of populates um, any variables that I might could use and layout height again is a built-in variable so I'll select it and click done and now the action is going to be to set um, set its Y coordinate back up to the top so basically back up to zero so add action I'll choose platform again get rid of that and then set Y and I'll set Y to zero now I want to do one more thing here where I want to not only send the platform back up to the top but I want to kind of have it appear not as the same series of platforms but as kind of a randomized series so I want to set the X coordinate to a random value let's go over to layout so we're going back up to the top and I want to set the X coordinate to a random value somewhere between zero and layout width so that way when one of these objects gets down to the bottom it doesn't come straight back down in the same X coordinate it kind of chooses a random one over here so um, I'll do a platform set X and then if I start typing random that gives me the random function I'll open parenthesis and then whatever I put inside these parentheses is going to be the upper limit of the range of random numbers that we want to create and so the documentation here says a range of random numbers to generate from 0 to 1 less than this value so I'm going to give it layout width and again the IntelliSense is there and then close paren and it's going to give me a random number from 0 to layout width minus 1 so there we have it let's go back over to our layout I'm going to get rid of a few of these platforms to make it a little challenging and kind of spread them out a little bit. Let's see how we can move these around. And I'm making sure that none of these have the same uh, Y coordinate to start with because if they had the same Y coordinate then they could respawn back up to the top together and potentially be um, get random X values at the same time and kind of overlap each other so we want to kind of spread them out over here and there we go so that looks decent and let's go ahead and run this game and see what our logic has added let me move it back over here and refresh so now all of these objects are moving and it looks kind of wonky because of the sign behavior makes it a little tricky I'm jumping really high so I could change those I could change that value of the jump strength so let's let's go back in here to our game let's choose the platform and go to its behaviors and let's get rid of the sign behavior for now yep and let's change the speed of the platforms to 200 so it's a little bit slower and for the player I'm gonna change this jump strength back down to let's change it to 700 and try and see what our layout our game looks like again 
and I keep forgetting to close the screen I ought to leave it up uh, let me refresh here and now I kind of see like an infinite jumper platform game so I can jump across all these platforms I can wrap still with my player and even if I fall from the bottom I'll still come out through the top now typically with this kind of game um, if you if you go down out the bottom you lose uh, which is kind of logical you want to stay basically on the screen as long as possible so I'm going to do similar to what we did with this um, comparing the Y coordinate of the platform I'm going to do the same for the player and if he gets to the bottom of the layout we could do several different things but for now we'll just keep it simple and just kind of restart the layout so let's add an event and let's do player compare Y and if his Y value is greater than layout height, again, there's the IntelliSense, uh, then I'll do a, and restart layout is under system. So I'll do a system restart layout. So let me see how long I can last now. I did it again, I closed my screen. So let me pull it back over here and refresh it. So I can jump up across still have the wrapping left and right but if I fall out the bottom now I restart my layout kinda quick to see but it kinda jumps me back to where I uh, where the start of the layout is so in the middle of the screen my player goes to so I can still play the game wrap around jump through all those things we added are still there and now we kind of had have an incentive to stay up so that um, concludes part four uh, stay tuned shortly, there'll be part five.